Welcome to the second video in the Acontis EC Engineer tutorial video series. Over the course of these videos, we will cover a variety of topics to help you get started and use EC Engineer. In this second video, we will walk you through a more advanced offline configuration that involves three servo drives. We will cover topics for PDO configuration and assignment and settings for CanOpen over EtherCAT Ethernet and distributed clocks. To get started, open EC Engineer and add a Class A master to your configuration. For this demonstration, we will use Yaskawa SGD7S servo drives, so expand the devices beneath Yaskawa and add three slaves to your configuration. Notice that there are several options to choose from, the difference being the firmware revision on the right. Once the drives are in the configuration, let's rename them to something more useful. Let's assume that each drive controls an axis in one of the three dimensions, so we'll label the first drive axis X and give it station address 10, the second drive axis Y with station address 11, and finally the third drive axis Z with station address 12. Now we will make some customizations to the default PDOs for each slave. A slave device may allow for different PDO assignments by selecting from various predefined PDOs, or even PDO configuration, where you can change the contents of a specific PDO or even create a completely new PDO. Whether PDO assignment or configuration is possible will depend on if the slave device manufacturer allows for it. Our devices in this example allow for both PDO assignment and configuration, so let's start by configuring the PDOs for the X-axis drive. Click on the device in the Project Explorer and select the PDO Mapping tab within the Device Editor window. Within this view, you will see the list of predefined PDOs and their contents that were set by the manufacturer. In the Inputs column, the second transmit PDO is assigned by default but we want to configure it differently by adding an additional entry. Click on the second transmit PDO mapping and click the edit button. This will bring up a new window where you can edit the entries within the PDO mapping. Click the add button and select the entry you wish to add. Here we will add the digital inputs from object dictionary entry hex value 60FD. Now you can see the new entry is part of the second PDO. You can also adjust the order of the entries. Click OK to preserve the changes to the PDO mapping and observe the changes on the screen. Now we will do the same for the outputs and add the digital outputs from the object dictionary entry. However, this entry has sub-indexes and we need to select the first sub-index to get the actual outputs from the device. We'll also rename the sub-index to digital outputs so the PDO mapping entries are easier to understand. Confirm the changes in the PDO mapping tab and also in the variables tab. For the Y-axis device, we will show you how you can change the PDO assignment to a different predefined PDO. Simply uncheck the box of the currently assigned PDO and check the box for the PDO you wish to assign. The changes that are made within the configuration will create init commands that contain the specific changes that are needed at startup. If you don't see this tab and some of the others shown here, you may need to change your view mode to expert. You can see all of the commands that have been created in the init commands tab. You can also make changes to existing init commands from this tab by clicking a command, then editing the value in the text entry box and hitting enter. Here we are changing the op mode from 8 to 9, which sets the drive to cyclic synchronous velocity mode. We can change other initialization parameters from the COE object dictionary tab. In this tab, you will see all of the object dictionary entries and you can change certain entries that are allowed by the manufacturer. 
Here we will change the sync error counter limit from 9 to 0. Observe that this created a new init command as well. Next, we will specify a unique IP address that can be used to address the devices via Ethernet over EtherCAT or EOE. Click on the slave device you want to edit in the Project Explorer area, select the Ethernet tab, check the box to overwrite the IP settings, and then type in the IP address information you desire. We will specify a unique address for each device in our configuration. Lastly, drives will typically be configured to use distributed clocks or DC for short. You can change this from the Distributed Clock tab. Here we can see that DC is being used for all of the drives by default. You can also change how the master will synchronize with the slave devices. Click on the master in Project Explorer, and under the Distributed Clocks tab, you can see which slave is the reference clock, and then adjust how the master will be synchronized with the reference clock. Here you can also choose to enable sync window monitoring, which is useful for diagnosing problems with the synchronization. Okay, so now we have our configuration, so let's save the project. And export the ENI file. That is all for this video. Thanks for watching and hopefully that gives you some more insight into some of the more advanced offline configuration options available to you within EC Engineer. In our next video, we will demonstrate an online configuration by scanning actual devices on the network. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for videos that you would find helpful, please leave them below or you can contact us on our website.